I'd like to welcome you all here today, National Debating Finals. Um, we have two fantastic teams up tonight. Um, we have South Leitrim, who are opposing the motion. We have their chair, Amory Gilda McCaffrey. Um, second speaker is Siobhan Gallagher. Third speaker is Bridget Stenson. And fourth speaker is Louise Houston. Um, then we have our proposing team tonight is Callum Mockra in Kilkenny. And we have their chair, Josephine O'Neill. Second speaker, Deirdre Purcell. Third speaker is Sean Lynch. And the fourth speaker is Christine O'Neill. So tonight, as it is a little bit different, we are online for our debating uh, finals, but we will be continuing the same format as any other debate. We will begin with our proposition chair and we will break then. And when we come back, we will go to our opposition chair, then back over to our proposition second speaker and over and back until we come to the final sum ups where we will have our opposing chair sum up before our proposing chair. So each speaker will have five minutes or six minutes to speak and Claire, with our timekeeper tonight, will indicate uh, five minutes by dinging and six minutes again. So I want to wish both teams the best of luck here tonight. And uh, we have our motion here is working from home will save rural Ireland. So we will um, kick off with our proposing team and their chair, Josephine O'Neill. Nirain Tinton, Marda Hinton Fain. This infamous Irish proverb reminds us that there really is no place like home. Unfortunately, remaining at home in rural Ireland is a luxury which many Irish people cannot afford. Lack of employment, lack of opportunity, lack of services, there are endless reasons why people are forced to migrate to urban centres. The COVID-19 pandemic forced an experiment upon Irish society which heralds a cure for the decline of rural Ireland. That experiment was working from home. A Cahirig, a Voltori, a Lochtan Rasura, August Akhoini Ushla. On behalf of the proposition from Callan Mochran Affirma, I'd like to welcome you to tonight's online debate. My name is Josephine, and I'm delighted to be joined by my teammates, Deirdre, Sean, and Christine, in proposing the motion that working from home will save rural Ireland. To begin, I'd like to define the motion. For clarity, and unless otherwise stated, all definitions originate from the Oxford English Dictionary. Working is having paid employment or to be engaged in manual labour. From indicates source. Home is a place where one lives permanently. Will is used to express a, a strong intention or assertion about the future. Save is to keep safe, prevent from dying or protect from harm or danger. And finally, the National Planning Frameworks, Ireland 2040, our plan, and our rural future, the Rural Development Policy 2021 to 2025, defines rural Ireland as settlements with a population of less than 10,000 people outside of a metropolitan catchment of a city and the hinterlands of these set settlements. But what are we proposing? We are here to propose that conducting your paid employment in your home rather than travelling to your workplace will, in the future, protect areas of Ireland with settlements of less than 10,000 people from decline. Ladies and gentlemen, rural Ireland is dying. To understand just how critical this situation is, let's rewind a little. In the 1900s, rural large families relied were the norm. However, changes in agricultural policies and technological developments, combined with a lack of other employment opportunities, forced young people to migrate to urban centres where jobs were more plentiful. Even when Ireland's unemployment rates hit a record eight-year low in recent years, the unemployment rates in rural Ireland were stubbornly high. These 
low unemployment levels also resulted in a population decline, with just over three in 10 now living in rural areas, according to the Central Statistics Office. But a lack of jobs and a population decline isn't the final nail in the coffin for rural Ireland. These problems have forced local businesses to close and vital services have been decimated, as Deirdre will outline tonight. In the last 25 years, 777 post offices have closed and a further 200 are at risk of closure within the next 12 months. Between 2012 and 2013, 139 Garda stations were closed. In 2017, Bank of Ireland went cashless in 100 branches nationwide. At the time, Eamon O'Queeve described the move as an insult to rural residents. I wonder how he would describe the recent closure of 103 branches completely. Deirdre will outline how working from home will save these services. Communities have been destroyed, but Sean will highlight how working from home will save rural Ireland's social scene and rejuvenate the sense of community that has sadly disappeared. In the recently published Our Rural Future, Minister Heather Humphrey states that the changes precipitated by the COVID-19 pandemic have left many young people openly questioning, can I do the same job working from home as I can in the city centre? And the pandemic has answered that question. Young people will no longer have to leave rural Ireland. Furthermore, and as Christine will outline, according to the Central Statistics Office, over 230,000 people commute from rural areas to the five largest cities on a daily basis. Working from home will mean that this arduous commute will no longer be necessary. It will mean that people can return to or remain in rural Ireland and those commuting long distances will have a better work-life balance, which will not only benefit themselves and their families, but also the rural communities in which they live, as Christine will outline. We will present you with the concrete evidence that will leave you no doubt that working from home will save rural Ireland. Shasagi Ling and support this motion. Pramila Magwev. We will now move to our chairperson from the opposing team, Anne-Marie McCaffrey. Good evening, chairperson, adjudicators, members of the proposition, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Anne-Marie Gildee, and I'm here with my colleagues to vehemently oppose the motion that working from home will save rural Ireland. Now, before I go any further, I'd like to just take a moment to look at the definition of the motion. Working means a paid employment. Home is the dwelling where one lives permanently, such as a house or apartment. Will save means to keep safe from harm or rescue. And when the dictionary definition didn't suit Josephine, which is rural is defined as characteristics of the countryside, she found unusual statistics. Because when we look at the Central Statistics Office from the last census definition of rural, uh, they defined rural as a district electoral division with a population uh, below 1,500 people, with a population density uh, below 150 people per square kilometre. And this is both in the rural structure development document and the Central Statistics Office uh, documents from 2019. So when the dictionary de definition doesn't suit Callan, and Ireland, as we've always found, is the 26 counties within the island of Ireland. So just to clarify what Calamacra are proposing tonight, they are proposing that the countryside of Ireland will now be rescued from harm by people working from their own bedrooms, kitchens and sitting rooms of the dwellings and families. Now, we have all been through a traumatic event in the past 12 months. In 2020, the world changed and we were hit with the unimaginable. We all entered a COVID bubble, not by choice, but by necessity, 
Bedrooms became places people slept and attempted to work from, as well as teach their children from. Be under no illusion, this was never a choice. It was a necessity. And when asked, 89% of workers reported that they are missing their workplaces, according to a survey by irishjobs.ie in April of this year. People want a good work-life balance, but for many, this involves leaving their homes and going out to work and returning when their day is over. It does not mean having their laptop open on the kitchen table as they try to cook their dinner. Now, being in macro, we need to take into consideration our young people. Many are choosing to work in urban and city areas to escape the isolation of the countryside, meet new people, gain work and life experiences. The majority of them desire to spread their wings and see what the bright light of Dublin, Paris or New York has to offer for them. In the last census, we found young people flock to the cities for the increased opportunities of work and education that sadly rural Ireland just doesn't provide. Also, and more worryingly, Cal and Mocker seem to have all overlooked the legal aspect of the motion proposed here tonight in relation to GDPR. The Association of Compliance Officers Ireland found that 89% of company executives had data security concerns about people working from home. And who can blame them? Uh, in order to meet the regulations, employees will have to keep data under lock and key 24 hours a day when working from home. So are Callan suggesting that all employees now donate some of their home square footage over to their employers to provide this legal inquirement? This motion is illogical and poorly thought out by Callan Mocker. I'd like to now introduce you to my fellow colleagues who have looked at the motion from various key aspects. Siobhan, our first speaker tonight, looks at the most fundamental flaw of this motion, the simple fact that many of the Irish workforce are unable to work from home. She will also highlight some of the most worrying figures that the HSC have reported from GPs in relation to mental health. And finally, Siobhan will take a look at how the government themselves have only harmed rural Ireland in the past with their half-hearted promises and then return all focus to urban centres. Our second speaker, Bridget, will look at something very close to our hearts here in Leitrim. A letter published in the Irish Times and in the local newspapers by one of our local GA clubs in the past few weeks in relation to housing and planning regulations. She will then look at the logistics on the Irish businesses if this motion was to pass. We're discussing the practicalities of having mm -hmm. people moved away from the cities and how this would impact the market in a competitive global market. Our final speaker, Louise, will look at the practicalities of this motion in relation to actually communicating with people. Trying to even get phone coverage can sometimes be difficult, let alone broadband. Louise will show how we are famously recognised as one of the EU countries with the slowest download speed. I am sure myself and my colleagues will leave you in no doubt after listening to us tonight that this motion should fall. Thank you. Now we will continue on with our second speaker in the proposition, Deirdre Purcell. No one shouted stop. Death to an Irish town. Good evening, adjudicators, chairperson, members of the opposition, ladies and gentlemen. I am delighted to be here tonight to second Josephine in proposing the motion that working from home will save rural Ireland. I started off with the name of a book written by John Healy in 1968 about a rural Irish town that was dying. 50 years later, and not much has changed. Too many dying towns to count. Dunhamagans, Gertnahu, Clonroach, Mulnahone, Kilkee, Kilcar. Rural towns and villages are being decimated, with businesses being forced to shut 
and vital services diminishing. Ladies and gentlemen, Anne-Marie came here today to tell us that we didn't choose a dictionary definition when she herself chose a definition from rural Ireland from the Central Statistics Office in 2019. We have chosen a, a definition from 2021, a definition of under 10,000 people, because more than 1,500 people in a rural area are intrinsic to sustainable, sustaining viable rural communities and have an interdependence with their rural surroundings. This is supported by Project Ireland 2040 and the definition proposed by our national government for the purposes of future growth and development within rural Ireland. So what are we talking about? 139 Garda stations clothing in 2012 and 2013. Why? Because there's not enough people to keep them. 159 post offices in 2019 for the same reason and 103 Bank of Ireland branches last month. Younger people have gone to the cities in search of jobs. Even the last news agents in Manor Hamilton, County Leitrim closed in 2017. If people were working from home, this will change. The 2016 census shows a 20% increase in the population of people over the age of 65 in rural Ireland. A population that will need these services, but not enough young people to keep them. The 2008 economic crisis has um, impacted rural Ireland uh, more so than that of cities. Since 2012, employment growth from the quarterly National Household Survey has been localised to Dublin, which saw 16% growth compared to 6% in the West. As rural areas have a higher age profile, these people are dependent outside of the working age. Cities have the lowest dependency rating at 45.9% and high rural areas at 63.5%. So if you want to save a dying town, you must find a new use for it. We no longer live in a Victorian agricultural economy. We live in the 21st century, where there are 80,000 tech professionals in Ireland. And what can they do? Work from home. The global pandemic of 2020 meant that people had to work from home, many leaving the expensive small apartments of cities and choosing their countryside and rural towns. The working from home lifestyle has brought new perspectives and appreciation for our rural land and being closer to our family. This has allowed people to have a greater work-life balance. And since April 2021, as Anne-Marie failed to mention, there has been a disconnection. You have the right to disconnect after your working hours, meaning that nobody is working and cooking their dinner late in the evening, as Anne-Marie has suggested. After the pandemic, the government's Our Rural Future Plan commits to 20% of civil servants continuing to work from home. This plus companies welcoming a switch to working from home and a tax incentive scheme to do just that, meaning there will be more people working in the cities and coming into rural areas. If there's more people in an area, then more services are needed, such as the post offices, the banks, the guard stations, the pubs. New businesses can open up, bring um, life into um, the towns, into cafes, butchers, uh, the bakers, the economy, supply and demand, ensuring that if there's more people, there's more money to spend, more infrastructure that the government will put in, including to that of the schools, where there is a lower education level in the countryside, as Anne-Marie also mentioned and um, bridging the gap between us and the cities. It's all circular. And that is why I am happy to be here tonight to second the motion that working from home will save rural Ireland. Go ahead, Anne-Marie, or um, Amanda, 
And um, yeah, we will now go to our second speaker in the opposition, Siobhan Gallagher. Thank you. Good evening, Chairman, Judges, members of the proposition. I am delighted to join my colleagues tonight from South Leach and Mokra and also second the motion, the opposition to the motion that working from home will save rural Ireland. Cal and Mokra are simply living in a dreamland and ignoring many realities. We expected them to come to the table tonight with ideas and plans and how they propose rural Ireland can be saved by people working from home and they haven't given us any concrete plans or ideas. The devil is always in the details, ladies and gentlemen. And when I reviewed how many jobs could actually be carried out at home, the list was pretty short. According to a February 2021 survey undertaken by McKinsey, a global consultancy firm, it is estimated that more than 60% of the workforce simply cannot work from home due to their job type. Providing care, teaching, operating machinery, using lab equipment, tradespeople and processing customer transactions in shops, banks and post offices are just some of the examples of where working from home would not be possible. Look at the essential workers who we all clapped for during the pandemic. They can't simply work from the kitchen table. How do Cal and Mokra propose that we deal with these jobs? They haven't told us anything. One simple example of where working from home clearly doesn't work is our teachers. Well, they did an amazing job working remotely in the emergency COVID pandemic situation, but there is unanimous agreement from all sides that it did not work for students, parents or teachers and students have regressed over the past 12 months and the effects of this will be seen for years to come. Now, MACRA as an organization is well tuned in to the hazards of rural social isolation, especially for farmers who tend to work in a very solitary environment. It's of no surprise to all tuned in tonight that farmers are among those most likely to die by suicide. We look to the work of Make the Move, an initiative set up by North Tipperary MACRA to help combat the mental health issues of farmers specifically. Have we not learned anything from listening to them? Christine wants to talk about work-life balance, but what about the 89% of people surveyed by irishjobs.ie who have said that they miss socialising with their colleagues? And what about the 40% of people surveyed by Mental Health First Aid Ireland who reported loneliness and poor mental wellbeing? The statistics don't lie, and people are standing up and giving their honest feedback, having worked from home for over, the, for over a year now. People are working two hours extra a day because they're working from home. That is not going to work, Callan Mopper. Callan are also now proposing that by working from home, we will save rural Ireland, but yet they're not able to give us any concrete ideas, but it will have the opposite effect. The HSC recently said that over 50% of GP visits at the moment are related to mental health issues, a huge rise from pre-COVID times. So we are already seeing that working from home is not a move in the right direction for our mental health. We must heed these warning signs and not make a move in the wrong direction that will damage our society due to an ill thought out policy that, COVID, that Callum Mokra still haven't provided us with. The government has consistently focused on urban development of our towns and cities across the country. And that's not going to change anytime soon. We all know the trend is towards jobs in Dublin, Cork, Limerick, Galway. Where's the children's hospital? Well, Dublin city centre. The government wants everything in the big cities and rural Ireland is suffering. There's no motorway in the Northwest. Sligo Airport has been closed. There are a limited number of towns serviced by the trains in the West and the Northwest. Hospitals are being downgraded. Banks and post offices are closing. These are facts. We will be called for fools if we simply believe that working from home will reverse this trend, especially as infrastructure planning is still fully focused on our urban areas. Now, Callum Mokra have alluded to it. The government recently announced their rural development plan, and it's clear to see that the focus is still on urban development, not rural development. Towns, they're going to re reinvent our towns through the, through the town centre first approach. They're going to give financial supports to encourage residential occupancy in towns. They're going to encourage town living. And then they're going to develop 400 remote working facilities in town centres. 
These are just some of the policy measures being considered by the government, none of which will save rural Ireland. They are all focused around towns. The big D, the decentralisation plan of the Bertie Ahern era, a plan to relocate over 10,000 public sector workers out of Dublin to rural Ireland, with only 3,000 taking the plunge and moving to, well, urban areas. It didn't work then, Deirdre, so it's not going to work now. It's just another failed plan by the government. And Callum Mopra forgot about the most important statement made by Heather Humphreys at the launch of the plan. Well, she doesn't think that working from home is healthy. I mean, we can't argue there. Talk is cheap, and we have seen time and time again that the government's plans simply don't stack up. In the same light, this half-baked plan proposed by Callum Mopra has more holes in it than a sieve. And we are confident that listeners here tonight will stand with South Leitrim and oppose the motion. Thank you. Um, so we'll now go to our third speaker in the proposing team, uh, Sean Lynch. Fado Fado in rural Ireland. We had packed pubs, thriving GA teams, bustling. Mokra Hods. Fado, Fado. Chairperson, adjudicators, members of the opposition, and my fellow teammates. Rural Ireland is dying on its feet. What was once a vibrant and lively social scene is now becoming no country for young men. Now, I cannot start this discussion without speaking about our rural clubs and teams who are running into extinction. In 2018, the Kerry County Board published a report on their, on their underage structures. And what they found was very interesting. 30% of their under 16 football teams could not field 15 players. But there's more. The Western People reported in 2019 in Sligo that five teams, five soccer teams, had disbanded in four years previous again due to lack of numbers. We need look only as far as our beloved Makra, where in Kilkenny County, we once had over 20 Makra clubs. Now, we have four, where once 60 people turned up every Sunday evening to indoor football, now we'd be lucky to have 15. But thankfully, the tide is turning. Professionals can now work from rural areas like Valencia, like Templemore, like Boyle, bringing with them their families and kids and rejuvenating the numbers in these clubs and teams. And what about the pubs, the local? Well, they're suffering too. In another uh, report, Drinks Industry Group of Ireland reported that between the years of 2005 and 2018, they saw a drop in pub licences from 8,500 to 7,000, a whopping 18 percent and only 12 of those pubs came from Dublin. Now there, again there's good news because people are returning to rural areas to work from home which will increase demand in these areas for bars and pubs which will in turn increase supply. As Deirdre mentioned it's all circular. Now to touch on a few of the points the opposition made this evening. And the chairperson, Anne-Marie, first of all, tried to tackle our definition of the motion. Our definition, Anne-Marie, is the most realistic definition. It's the most up-to-date definition. And you complained about us not picking the Oxford Dictionary definition, but then you cherry-picked your own definition. So that's not fair play, is it? You also spoke about how 90% of people miss the office without tying it in to the actual motion and pointing out its relevance. Also, 90% of people might miss the office, but that doesn't mean that they actually want to go back. Actually, myhome.ie published a report in 2020, and they found that 46% of people said they would already have relocated or want to relocate because of working from home. You mentioned how young people want to go to the cities and poetically experience the bright lights. Yes, let them do that. That's fine. We didn't say they couldn't. We're not saying everyone has to work from home. We're saying 
a certain degree of people will work from home from now on, and that will save rural Ireland. He spoke about the GDPR, again, not relevant to the motion, but companies who are very, very worried about their GDPR issues can still categorise their employees as essential workers. Banks do it all the time. Now, to move on to Siobhan, who spoke about how we had no concrete ideas. Siobhan, we're coming with the Rural Future Plan. We're coming with our road to the Rural Future Plan. We're coming with all these government policies mandated and set out and set in stone to carry us forward. In fact, Eamon Ryan announced that 70,000 people under the National Broadband Plan will have super fast broadband by the end of the year. If that's not concrete, I don't know what is. He spoke about mental health issues again, uh, Siobhan. Well, mental health issues is down to the pandemic. It's not down to working from home. If people want to log off, there's now laws set in place where people have the right to log off. That's in the Rural Future Plan if you had read it. You also spoke about how 60% of people cannot work from home, the teachers, nurses. Again, we're not saying everyone has to work from home, but there are tech workers, there are off Google, who have announced that most of their workforce will be working from home going forward. He spoke about, the, he spoke about the lack of infrastructure, uh, which won't allow people to work from home and work in rural Ireland. Well, with uh, an extra population, which will be moving back to rural Ireland, that will see added investment in infrastructure. The government announced that in the Rural Future Plan greater investment in footpaths, cycle lanes, uh, additional bus routes. That's all happening, it's all in motion. So I started uh, my speech this evening by speaking about how rural Ireland was dying on its feet. Well, because people are moving back to rural Ireland, we will be a rural revival. We will. So please, Stand with us this evening and propose this motion. Thank you. We go again there. Um, so we'll we now continue on with our third speaker from our opposing team, Bridget Stenson. Ladies and gentlemen, adjudicators, members of the proposition, this motion simply does not stand. First of all, we had Deirdre, starting with her own definition, cited by uh, the Rural Ireland Development Plan, and yet she ostracised Anne-Marie for using the Oxford English Dictionary, which doesn't make sense when she deviated from herself. We, South Leitrim, are very aware of the realities of rural Ireland. And simply tonight, all Callan have done is give us a history lesson of the demise of rural Ireland. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we all agree that young people would love to live in rural Ireland, but it is simply impossible for young people to reside in their local parish. Planning permission is challenging. Councils, albeit under the instruction of the government, who have the power to control planning permission laws are outright refusing urban one off or rural one off housing. Calvin in 2019 had 36 successful rural houses granted planning permission, mere 11 in Leitrim in 2020. Well, Naglera, like Kerry, as Sean has alluded to, states. That Balnaglera GA stated that if we can't get young people to live in these rural heartlands, then how are we able to sustain our teams, our GAA teams? So, ladies and gentlemen, rural Ireland needs houses. There is a national crisis, a housing shortage. How can people work from home if they can't even have a home in rural Ireland to begin with? Can have deviated from the motion all evening. One government solution to this housing crisis is communal living space. You rent a room and you share the living space. This is simply not conducive to working from home. An Irish Times article um, mentioned Terry Highland, the Leitrim manager, and admits that two or three of the senior squad live or work in Ireland, in Leitrim. 
And again, Sean alluded to the demise in rural Ireland and how um, working from home will improve this. But again, people can't work from rural Ireland if they don't have a house in rural Ireland. Many global businesses need transport. And that is why cities like Dublin, Cork are chosen due to having ports, airports and motorways. Of these businesses, many are interdependent on each other and therefore specialised zones like the IFC emerge. Rural locations with potholes and no logistics capacity is not going to be an option for these companies that need quick access internationally to Europe. Cities will still win out. Both Deirdre, um, Deirdre had mentioned that um, uh, cities, that young people were driven to cities. Um, and Josephine had mentioned the importance of cities that were, young people had no other option. Take head offices for many companies and charities, and you'll find a deep preference for city locations due to the plethora of services and facilities nearby. We simply have to look no further than MACRA, a young person's organisation with a pivotal interest in rural Ireland and the stalwarts of the land. Ladies and gentlemen, if ever there was a more worthy cause for having a rural headquarters, um, and challenging the status quo, then MACRA is ideally positioned. Josephine, after her Irish lectures, now sorry Josephine, the Irish debates tomorrow night, you're a bit early for it, mentioned 770 post offices are closing. So how is working from home going to revitalise that? We've heard no proposals from Callan about how there it's going to be solved. Are people working from home going to send letters instead of emails because there's no broadband in rural Ireland? Um, so they might have to just do that. Guard stations closed during the recession, which was not the fault of people living in, in rural areas. It was a, a money-saving exercise that... Um, that was to pool resources mm -hmm. rather than having one guard on a bike. Deirdre used the census herself and yet judged at Anne-Marie for using the census. In 2013, uh, 111 news agents uh, closed and Duffy's on Parnell Street was one example in Dublin. So not to just isolate and ostracize rural news agents for closing. We do have uh, mobiles and the device of e as well. Microsoft in their right to disconnect had said 37% of workers complained uh, companies were taking too much from working out of the office. Um, we have Deirdre who insulted Irish farmers and Irish dairy farmers. Irish beef has never been more demanding. We've exported 1.3 billion in 2018 to the UK alone. And we have 18,000 dairy farmers with dairy farming booming since the demise of quotas. 40 gold Thank states. You. Thank you. Um, so we'll now continue on to our fourth speaker in the proposition, Christine O'Neill. Good evening, Chairperson, Adjudicators, members of the opposition, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Christine and I'm delighted to join you all virtually this evening to further propose this motion that working from home will save rural Ireland. Now, firstly, I'd like to all, let us all take into account that we all have enough broadband to be here virtually this evening, which seems to baffle Bridget on the opposition in Leitrim. Deirdre and Sean have spoken about the people who are living in urban areas who would like to come back to rural Ireland due to the opportunities and flexibility provided by working from home. But I'm going to enlighten you about the many benefits that can be provided to our rural dwellers, those already living in rural Ireland. According to the CSO in 2016, 230,000 people commute on a daily basis from rural Ireland to the five main Irish cities. This number has increased by 11% in the last four years 
since those statistics were released. Up to date evidence, which we have not heard from the, from the opposition all evening. A recent report from the RT News suggests that prior to the pandemic, up to 28 minutes was spent by 90% ev- by of Irish workers in their workday commuting one way to work. And 10% of the workforce spent over an hour morning and evening commuting. Think of the numerous ways that these workers, if even half of these workers could work from home, how better could they spend their time and their hard earned money? So I'll tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the average worker, rather than sitting on the M50 for hours, could be at home enjoying a coffee with friends. They could be going to the cinema, keeping local businesses in rural communities alive. Rather than taking a gruelling train journey home, they could be on a training field, keeping sporting communities in rural Ireland alive. Parents would be able to see their children for more than five minutes in the evening. They wouldn't run in the door at eight o'clock. They would be able to pick up their kids from school. They would be able to do homework and show their children that they work to live, but they don't live to work. Working from home would also support our elderly generation. At the moment, many people suffer from stress because they can't support their parents. They're living and working in urban Ireland where they would prefer to work at home and be able to support and provide assistance to keep their parents out of nursing homes. Now, Bridget provided us with no references and is very concerned about the fact that there's it's difficult to get a planning permission. But there are many houses in rural Ireland that haven't been used. There are six times the number of people people looking on daft.ie for houses in Leitrim and in Cork over the last number over the last 12 months. There's also a 1 billion euro rural regeneration plan that has been announced by the government to provide houses and to provide funds for these houses in rural Ireland. Also, Bridget, is it easier to get a house in Dublin? Tell us that these days. It's very difficult. Also, it's not, she says, it's not conducive to work in a house together if there's a few people working together. But as part of the rural development plan, there's work hubs has been suggested for rural communities. So you can use a hot desk in five minutes away from your home rather than traveling along with those 230,000 people who are leaving rural Ireland on a daily basis. She is discussing traditional decentralization, the likes of Manor Hamilton, which didn't work because people did not choose to leave their, the city centre, whereas now we're giving people the option to stay at home and to work in their local community. As Bridget said, there's no broadband. Well, let me h- highlight the National Broadband Plan of 2025, Bridget. This has been accelerated so that 95% of the population will have access to high-speed broadband by 2024 now, with 70,000 households getting access to broadband by the end of this year alone. There's also tax incentives which have been introduced that 320 per day will be given to anybody working from home so that they can pay for their own private broadband. This has not been an issue for any of us here this evening. So she also mentioned other things with decentralization which have not worked so far. Siobhan went on about mental health and the issues with suicide rates, but everybody would have issues with their mental health at the moment because we are in a global pandemic, which is stressful for everybody. Working from home is not it. We also have highlighted the legal ramifications. So GDPR may be an issue. Mm. Well, let me remind you, most things are done online these days. Things can be saved to the cloud. We do not have to work in a little box where we're locking things away by key. WhatsApp is even end-to-end encrypted these days. So everything will progress from here and improve in the future. We are not talking about working from home being perfect now. We are talking about how this will progress, how things will improve, and how this will save rural Ireland. Thank you very much. Start recording. So now we will go to our um, fourth speaker in our opposition, Louise Houston. Thank you. Chairperson, adjudicators, members of the proposition, ladies and gentlemen, I'm relieved to be here tonight to stand with my colleagues from South Leitrim to shed some truth on the subject that working from home simply will not alone save rural Ireland. Ladies and gentlemen, 
First of all, I'd like to start talking about the fact, and that is that high speed internet connection is necessary to communicate and to work from home. The National Broadband Plan of Ireland is currently failing us, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, Bridget had issues and Sean was paused for a few minutes also. Christine said we had perfect reception. That was not true. I think she must be at a, in a different world to the one we were in. We've had problems because we live in rural Ireland and the connections are not there. The National Broadband Plan, ladies and gentlemen, has been flawed by, from the get-go. <laughs> Uh, it, it has spiralled out of control cost-wise. It's going to cost €6,000 per home. And the reality is uh, that just 12.5% of homes that are, will, be, will have high-speed broadband by the end of this year. And that's a very recent um, statistic from an article in the Irish Examiner on the 29th of March. That contradicts what Christine has told us earlier. Just 12.5% of homes will have broadband in time. This is a seven year plan. The, the rollout is expected to be completed by 2026. We will live in a different society by 2026. It will be too late for many places in rural Ireland. Ireland actually ranks 25th worst out of 27 countries in the EU for our download speeds. This is the realities of the situation, ladies and gentlemen. We simply cannot all work from home in rural Ireland because the service level is not there to allow us to do so. Um, Josephine started off by saying that technology is going to save all the jobs from, uh, or is going, to, is going to somehow rescue the jobs with, that we are hemorrhaging out of post offices, garbage stations, et cetera. I still haven't heard tonight what the solution to that problem is for rural Ireland. Our people are losing their rural services and they are desperate, they don't know where to turn. Not everybody is tech savvy, not everybody wants to do internet banking and there is no provision for them people. Um, Josephine also mentioned um, the rural development plan. The rural development plan has been spoken about at length, but really is all it is is a talking shop. There's no concrete figures. There's 152 policy initiatives and not one of them is costed. Cal and Mokra, where are they going to get the money for that type of plan? It's just idle talk, promises. I think one of the, one of the proposals has a timeline. That's it within the plan. Where was the plan launched, ladies and gentlemen? It was launched in Croke Park back to that centralized attitude that the government has and is not going to lose anytime soon. Leo Varadkar even spoke recently and he's the Thonishta and he said, as with opportunities uh, with regard to uh, work, working from home and remotely, there will also be challenge, there will also be uh, challenges as well as opportunities. Home working will hollow out our cities and we need to be very careful of this. This is what he said, these are his words. Dublin, Cork and Limerick are now competing with Barcelona, Paris and Lisbon. Our cities still need to be vibrant places. So the government is very much gonna keep focus on our cities too. They're not gonna shift their entire efforts to a rural revival. They'll, they'll tell us they will, but what will they do in reality? And we all know the disappointments of the past. Deirdre um, mentioned, um, she gave a specific example of the shop closing in Manor Hamilton. And if people came, uh, if, if people worked from home, this would all be rejuvenated and revived. She obviously hasn't um, any idea of the commercial or business world because it's not just that straightforward. There's crippling rates, crippling rents, crippling regulations for all of these things. And that, and that has, has proven to have, that is why we have many small shops closing. They're not able to compete with the little and Aldi in big urban areas next door. People want to go into Starbucks and Sligo. They don't want to shop in Manor Hamilton, unfortunately. So Callan have not provided any solution for that type of problem. Uh, Deirdre mentioned 80,000 tech professionals. I ran the numbers really quick. We have 2.32 million of a workforce. So just 3%, that's what that 80,000 80, tech professionals represents. That's 3% of our workforce that we're catering for. That is a very, very small minority. 
Uh, we also talked about the want to disconnect. A Microsoft study of 31,000 people globally actually showed uh, said that it showed that 54% people felt they found themselves overworked. There was 41 million more emails sent in February 2021 than February 2020, ladies and gentlemen. People are working from home and they're working harder. And the stats show that they're not happy. It's not all a positive story. Sean also mentioned um, GDPR not being relevant. It's very relevant. And he mentioned the broadband plan. And as I've outlined, it is failing us. It is not working. Ladies and gentlemen, if you take a common sense approach tonight, you will stand with South Leitrim Makra in saying that, unfortunately, working from home will not save rural Ireland. It's not the silver bullet. Thank you. Yeah, we'll stay with our opposing team and we will head back to their chair, Anne-Marie, for her closing argument. Good evening again, chairperson, adjudicators, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight with my fellow colleagues, I came to you to vehemently oppose this delusional motion that working from home could save rural Ireland. I started by explaining the effects of this on our younger people in society, as well as looking at the legal aspects under the strict cheap DPR regulations, which Callan Mocker seemed to uh, just wish over and say were unimportant. Uh, Deirdre started tonight with a 1968 quote from John Healy, no one shouted stop and debt to an Irish town. Yet she continued to give us a dreamy view of how everyone stayed at home, we'd all be saved, that post offices, guard stations, even Manor Hamilton's news agent would be saved yet never gave any idea how working from home could actually save rural Ireland. Words are cheap, yet Josephine um, had only words and Deirdre no action. Deirdre also mentioned the new document from, uh, from working from home plans and that people working from home are, have, have actually have higher stress levels than those who go out to work. 37% of workers reported companies expected too much out of them when they're not in the office. And Deirdre and Josephine both mentioned extensively the Rural Development Plan, an amazing idea, yet it was a plan with 152 policies, none costed and launched in Dublin city centre. Now our first speaker tonight, Siobhan, looked at the most fundamental flaw with this motion the simple fact that 60% of the Irish workforce are unable to work from home. She also highlighted some of the most worrying figures that the HSE reported, that 50% of all GP visits related to mental health issues, a significant rise since more people have had no choice but to work from home. She then explained to us that the government's plan for the past have failed and how plans to increase people living in towns, not rural Ireland, as McCallum Mocker would have you believe, with 400 remote working facilities in town centres. Now, Christine discussed how amazing the broadband was and that how we had no problems here tonight. Yet on two occasions, Bridget failed and we lost Sean in his speech. And in fact, we had to redo the chat room because of broadband issues. She stated everyone from home will get a tax incentive of, of 320 a day, 320 to pay for eight hours of heat, light and internet, not really much of an incentive. She said we will be able to spend our working day supporting elderly family members. Christine, I'm not sure how you work, but caring for family members and working at the same time is impossible, trying to make halves of herself. She also mentioned being able to collect the kids from school. Now school finishes midway through a working day. Again, are you expecting us to try and make halves for ourselves? You can understand why stress levels rise. Our second speaker tonight, Bridget, talked to you about the Ballinaglera GEA Club's letter that rang true for most of us in the Northwest of Ireland. She explained we are in a national crisis when it comes to housing and planning permissions in rural Ireland. And simply, how can we save rural Ireland from home if we can't even live there. Bridget also looked at the need for Irish business to have central locations for simple access to transport facilities. She gave us the example of how the Irish Farm Centre was chosen, has chosen the city location due to the city benefits. 
Now, Siobhan, Sean discussed how it was no country for young men. Well, Sean, it's starting to look like it's no country for young men or women. Uh, he discussed the Kerry GEA and how they're unable to field 13% of their GEA teams. But let's, let's imagine these young men and women do move back to Rhode Island. Sean, where are they going to live? Their cars, as we have explained, it is next to impossible to get planning permission due to government regulations. Sean was yet another beautiful calendar dreamer. Thanks to rural Ireland are going to be able, uh, we're going to have prime bus routes and bus links and all new footpaths. Again, no plan of where these are going to come from. Yet here in Leitrim, our closest bus station is actually 40 minutes away and no plans on how this could change. Sean also uh, diminished when I brought up the GDPR and said that it was completely irrelevant. Sean, companies employ people specifically to deal with their GDPR regulations. This is an actual legal requirement and something that Sean has just chosen is completely irrelevant. Ding. Louise, our final speaker, then looked at the practicalities of this motion in relation to actually communicating with people. And we've had numerous problems tonight here with broadband. It is next to impossible to get even phone coverage. And we are expected with all these dreams, plans to have better working environment. With just 12.5% of homes in Ireland with high speed internet, Kilkenny councillors rose in the Kilkenny people in February of this year that 18,300 of their companies had insufficient broadband. This plan is doomed to fail, I'm afraid. This motion must fall. So please stand with us here in South Leitrim and oppose this motion. Thank you. Now we will come, go back to our proposing team and their chair, Josephine O'Neill. In an article in this week's Farmer's Journal, Siobhan Finn of the National Association of Community Enterprise Centres states that when we emerge from the COVID-19 pandemic, we need to build back better. Ladies and gentlemen, we the proposition have come here tonight to outline how working from home will allow rural Ireland to build back better. Unfortunately, the opposition have failed to do so. Tonight, the proposition's first issue was with our definition. And just to clarify, our definition of rural Ireland is the most up-to-date definition available emerging from a 2021 document from our national government and is used in two state policies. Moving on, the opposition, all speakers, had major issues with the fact that we came here with absolutely no plans. But, ladies and gentlemen, we, the proposition, have stated making ro uh, remote work the government's policy for uh, wor working from home. We've mentioned our rural plan, the rural redevelopment policy. We've mentioned Ireland 2040, the plan for Ireland's development up until 2040. We've mentioned the right to disconnect, allowing workers to switch off. We have come here also to to show you how working from home will bring back services that have been decimated in rural Ireland, as Deirdre stated, how clubs and societies which are starting to die will be regenerated, as Sean outlined, and how commuters travelling long distances will have more time to spend not only with their families, but also in their local communities, spending money, meeting people and uh, getting involved in that local local community to bring much needed life back to rural Ireland. Now, Anne-Marie and Siobhan both came here with issues about working from home, stating that people are working two hours longer, as Siobhan said, and Anne-Marie said they'd be slaving over the laptop when they're cooking the dinner. But we have highlighted the right to disconnect, where once work has finished, the employee has a right to switch off and does not have to continue working. The op op opposition, excuse me, were very caught up in mental health as well. But as we have already highlighted, we're living in a pandemic of an extremely challenging situation for everybody. In the Making Remote Work, Tanish uh, Leo Vradker stated that working from home is a change that should take years. 
We had days to adjust to it. And as Leo Vradker stated, we did adjust. We made it work. It was a success in extremely challenging situations. Siobhan stated that people were isolated and lonely. Of course, they're isolated and lonely. We're in lockdown. We can't leave our homes. Nothing is open. What other option have we? Um, she also stated that there was a rise in referrals to GPs. Again, we're living in a pandemic. It's extremely stressful and worrying for everybody. Siobhan and Bridget spoke about decentralization in the past. Decentralization in the past was a move made by government to move departments from Dublin to a physical location. For example, the Department of Education was moved to Athlone. People didn't want to uproot their families and move, and that is why it failed. This is a modern decentralization where you can have your office based in Dublin, but your employees can work wherever they like, wherever their home is. Um, they also spoke about, Bridget spoke about offices like Mocker and Affirma being set up in Dublin. We are not under any circumstances suggesting that offices and head offices and headquarters be moved. They are set up where they're set up. We are giving the workers a chance to work where they would like. Siobhan spoke about how not everybody can work from home. Yes, that is understandable, but the government plans are proposing that 20% of public sector employees, colleges, etc., be given the opportunity to work from home. And should they request the right, they can't. That right can be denied. We are not saying that everybody should work from home. We are saying that everybody can be given the opportunity to work from home, so that when they can pick where they want to work, they can do so in their own homes in rural Ireland and bring with them people, lives, services, etc. Moving on then, a lot of the um, opposition speech tonight was based on COVID-19, isolation, um, children at home, no schools, all of that is null and void. We cannot base working from home in the future, which is what we've come here tonight to speak about, based on what's happened in COVID-19. That was exceptional circumstances, which was forced upon everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, to quote Siobhan Finn again, COVID-19 presented us with a once in a lifetime opportunity to revitalise our rural areas. And that revitalisation came from working from home. As Deirdre said, more people working from home will mean more people in rural Ireland, more services. Sean said more people working from home, more sports teams. And Christina stated more people being able to work from home instead of commuting will mean that they will be able to spend more time in their local communities join with us and support the motion thank you thank you very much to all the competitors here tonight a fantastic debate